We are now going to discuss angles. We previously discussed segments, so we're going to add the stuff to angles. First thing we need to do is define an angle. And again, this is one of your vocab words. So an angle is two rays with a common endpoint. Okay. So I'll draw the ray AB. I'll draw the ray AC. And they have the common endpoint A where point A is called the vertex of the angle. The segment or the ray that's AB, that's called a side. And there are two sides to any angle. The symbol that we use for an angle looks like this. Actually, that's the less than symbol. It is a horizontal line that looks almost like the less than symbol. Because you can confuse it with the less than symbol, I want you to put a little arc when you give me the symbol for an angle. Okay? There are four different ways that I can name this angle. Sometimes you'll see a little number inside of an angle, so I could call this angle one. Another way to name it is you start at one of the rays common endpoint, and then go to the other ray. So I could call this angle BAC. I can name it in the opposite direction, angle CBA. Or if it is unambiguous, I can call it just by its vertex. I could call this angle A. So where I cannot use a single letter is where it's ambiguous. For example, if I go A, B, C, D, E, I could not name any angle, angle E, because it could mean any one of those four angles where I have those things that um, raise with common endpoints. Um, the next thing I want to talk about are adjacent angles. Okay, adjacent angles share a common interior side. Okay, so what I'm going to do is show you, we're going to call it A, B, C. D, angle ABC, and angle CBD are adjacent. Okay, they have to share a common side, and that common side has to be the interior of two big angles for it to be an adjacent angle. And let me underline that in purple. That goes in your vocab. Okay, for the purposes of this class, all angle, um, for at least the first semester, the measurement of an angle, which is we measure how far it is open, we measure angles in degrees, for um, this class, when you get to Algebra 2, we will talk about other types of angle measurements. But for this class, we measure it in degrees. If I want to know how big an angle is, we put the little letter M in front of the angle symbol. The measurement of an angle has to be more than zero degrees, and it has to be less than or equal to 180 degrees. 
So in geometry class, we start out by defining angles that are more than zero and less than 180 degrees. Okay? Um, make sure that you understand that definition. So using this, as all my angles are here, we can classify angles by their sizes. These are all definitions. Make sure these all get in your vocab book. An acute angle has a measurement more than zero, but less than 90. A right angle, so an acute angle, right angle, the measurement of a right angle is equal to 90 degrees. An obtuse angle has a measurement that's more than 90 degrees, but it is less than 180 degrees. And then I have a straight angle and its measurement is equal to 180 degrees. One that's not in your book but that we will talk about um, in class is called an oblique angle and an oblique angle is a non right non straight angle so an oblique angle is anything that's not straight up and down or straight side to side okay it's anything that uh, tilts now in middle school, you may have been taught about what's called a reflex angle, but we will not talk about that in this class, okay? So, other things that we need to talk about is angle bisectors. An angle bisector is a ray interior to an angle that forms two congruent angles. And if two, con two angles are congruent, that means that their measurements are the same. So if I call if I say that ray CD is the bisector of angle ACB, let's draw that really quick. So here's ACB. D has to be inside this angle, so it's on the interior. If I know that this is true, if CD is, if ray CD is the bisector of angle ACB, then I know that angle ACD, that's this part right here, is congruent to angle DCB. If the two angles are congruent, I know that their measurements are equal to each other. Never give me a congruent symbol unless you have, um, if you give me the measurement sign, and never give me an equal symbol without the measurement in front of the angles. Okay, so now let's talk about how do I actually get the measurement of angles. And this will be our next postulate, which is postulate number three. It is on page 24 of your textbook. Make sure you copy it word for word and then you use the extra notes that I'm going to write down. Postulate three is called the protractor postulate. So I'm going to write postulate three. It's the protractor postulate. Okay. 
And what it says is that if I put the middle of the protractor at the vertex, that the measure of an angle is equal to the absolute value of the two numbers the, of the difference of the numbers red on a protractor. Okay, a lot of times you'll put the zero as one of your rays, but you don't necessarily have to do that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use a straight edge and draw an angle, and then I'm going to show you using my protractor how I can come up with its measurement. So here's an angle. Make sure that line's kind of long. So there's an angle, and I want to know its measurement. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the protractor, and I said you have to have the middle of the protractor. What I mean the middle of the protractor is the one that lines up with the 0 and the 180 that has the little tick mark here in the middle. I just got to put that somewhere in the middle here. Okay? And what it tells me is that the measurement of the angle is the absolute value of the difference of the two numbers I read off. Well, I'm going to use the outside numbers here. And this outside number is 130 degrees. And this outside number looks to be about, we get it back at 130. This outside number over here looks to be about 11 degrees. So my angle is going to be equal to the absolute value of 119 degrees, which is 119 degrees. Now, what's convenient is if you're able to get your protractor to align so that the 0 slash 180 is on one of your numbers, then I would get the 119 on this one and a 0 here, and 119 minus 0 is 0. So the same kind of thing you use with a ruler, you can actually get the measurement of the angle. So these are the extra words you have to have for the protractor postulate. Our next postulate is postulate number four. Just like I was able to add segments, I can also add angles. And it is called the angle addition postulate. Again, make sure you copy all of the words out of the textbook. And it's on page 25. And it says that if I have a big angle that is made up of two adjacent angles, so I have a big angle that's made up of two adjacent angles, then the measure of the big angle is equal to the measure of the little plus the measure of the little. So little angle plus little angle equals big angle. In this case, the measure of angle ABC is equal to the measure of angle 1 plus the measure of angle 2. So make sure you get word for word copied out. Again, it was on page 25. And that you um, add these extra little words. Little angle plus little angle is big angle. And maybe draw the drawing so that you have a relationship that is in there. Um, we have already talked about angle bisectors. Make sure that you understand that a bisector has to be on the interior of an angle. Um, same thing with um, angle addition postulate. These two angles have to be adjacent 
to each other. So that is it for our basic angle definitions and our postulates. Make sure you have your notes and stuff ready for class tomorrow.